Hi guys, hope you're doing well, hope you're thriving. My name is Doreen. If you're new here, you are welcome to the channel. This is a channel where we share about women wellness and well-being and the topics include but are not limited to skincare, motherhood, parenting, business and all things to do with women. And in this video, I'm going to share about menstrual hygiene. Uh, I've been meaning to do this topic for a very long time and recently we had a function at a hotel and someone had used a pad and had just thrown it there in the dustbin. You know those little small bins like this one? Someone had just thrown their pad just there like that. So I had some tissue that I went to throw there and behold the site that I found. And I was like, you know what? This video is long overdue. So let's talk about it. This information is for a young girl out there who is yet to start her periods or who has just started and they don't know what to do. Or even us, the normal people who have been there for a long time, we seem to not to know what to do. Yeah, so I'm going to share about menstrual hygiene and I hope that at the end of this video I shall be better at handling menstruation or that menstruation period because it comes every month. We cannot avoid it and we cannot put this information off for any longer. Yeah, so let's get into it. So if you're a young girl out there and you have just started your periods or you're watching this video and you've not started your periods and you're wondering what you're going to do or how, how it's going to go when your periods start. So I want to first tell you that it is okay. When your periods start, it is okay. You're not sick. You're not lame. You are normal. You are normal and it is okay for every girl to go through menstru the menstruation period. And if you're a girl, out there and you're not going through it then it is not normal you all know that when you've started your menstruation and you miss a period you get worried yeah so if it has started then that means your system is working your reproductive system is working very well so you have to thank god that your menstruation period has started or it has come and now that it has started you have to be intentional about counting the days so that you can know your cycle uh, your cycle is from the first day you, you have your period up to the next day, like up to the day before your next period. So if you start your period on first and your next period is on 29th, that means your cycle is 28 days. If your next period is on first, that means your cycle is 30 days. Yeah, so you have to know your cycle so that you know when to expect your next period then secondly you have to be extra extra clean because during that menstrual period there's the blood that comes out and that it needs to be managed very well for you to stay clean stay healthy and not smell or have that pungent smell around you when you're in your menstruation period first so, and foremost uh, if you've not just started your periods and you know it's about time you need to get a pack of pads so there are these orays which are small like this and then there are these soft cotton ones which are a bit big these ones are for people who have slightly a heavy flow but these cotton ones i feel like are more comfortable and they don't give like a papery feel like this one so if but for the start you can start with these ones because they are light they are small you won't feel uh, uncomfortable with them you can also move with panty liners uh, just in case uh, the, the, the menstruation starts and when you check your panty, when you feel like things are flowing down in, on your panty, then when you check and find blood, you can put up, you can change your, you change your panty um, and then you put a pad on a new panty. If you've not moved with a, a new panty and you're at school, you know, you can go to your senior woman and you tell them what has happened and then they will help you out. But it's important to stay prepared. For you to stay prepared, I have these small bags. This is big, but you can get a small one. So you can get a bag like this and then you put a panty, an extra panty. You know, I always pack a panty, you put an extra panty, uh, you put a pad or some panty liners, you put some wipes, and then you put a lace like this, just in case, you know, things go through and you can cover yourself as you go to, you know, change or do something about it. Yeah, so this goes, this actually goes for all of us as ladies. In your handbag, I know there are some people who like to carry very small handbags, but in your handbag, at least have a panty liner, a, a pad, you know, a spare pad, 
and a change of panties or a knicker like an extra knicker just in case the one you're with gets soiled or gets blood on it and you can't put a pad on top of the blood because you know that it might go through so you might have to change the panty completely fold it very well put it in your bag and then put on the new panty with the with the pad or the panty liner yeah so those are some of the important things for the beginners and also for for the people who are for us who have been in our periods for a long time that is some one of the things that to take care of and then how many times to change a pad it's important that every six hours you change a pad every six hours because when blood stays together for long in that closed environment in that you know like as blood collects on your pad if it stays there for long i think it starts forming some other things together with the pad you know the chemicals in the pad and the blood they start forming some things you find when the pad has green things if you overstay with it you start feeling itchy down there if you overstay with it so every six hours it's important to change a pad and if you if you have a very heavy flow then there you have to even change like every three hours or something like that but if your flow is normal it's important to not go at least at most past eight hours without changing a pad yeah so the number of times to change a pad throughout your period depends on the flow and then the minimum the minimum hours you can stay apart with that six to eight hours so as you change a pad some sometimes you can use a tissue to just you know pat around the the affected area or the vaginal area where the blood is coming from just remove the excess blood so that it doesn't go so that it doesn't you know stain on the uh, sides of your cloth or something like that or you can use a wipe or you can use water depending on what is accessible for you yeah but if you're moving and you're like going to office the whole day or you're in school you can pack you can carry your wipes and then you just refresh it down there before you change a pad that can really come in handy in making you feel better and making you feel good and if your periods are painful i've seen people who take um painkillers but i feel like it's very important for you to go to a doctor so that they can check and see why your periods are painful ideally i think they're not supposed to be that painful for you to take painkillers uh, you can feel a discomfort of things are going on but if something is so painful that you can't function please see a gynecologist so that they can see what is causing that much pain for the periods it's better to be safe than sorry so i've shared briefly about pads but there are very many different things that you can use to trap the blood uh, there are menstrual cups i will put a picture here so that you can see it they are on a rise like they're increasing very much very many people are using them and they're liking them i personally want to try them i haven't tried them but i'm going to try them uh they are sustainable you use the cup pour out the blood wash the cup put it back like it seem it seems like from people's experiences it seems like it's really working hard it's really working for them yeah so i also want to try it there are tampons so if you're not into pads you can use tampons if they can work for you uh, and also pads they're different they're not all arrays there's shuya there's very many different kinds of pads on the market so you try until you find the one that works for you or you ask around your friends and see what they are what, what is working for them and then you try that yeah so it's not like set in stone like you have to use always or you have to use you know uh shuya or anything like just try different brands on the market and then you'll find what works for you and then you can use that now i'm going to share about how to wrap a pad so you in your periods you have used the pad you have finished using it um so you finished using your pad and you want to dispose it away. You don't to dispose it off. So pads come in these varas. Even this one. Let me open this one also. And let's see. Yeah, so even these ones come in this packing, the package. Yeah, so if you're going to use this pad, you just hold up here like this on this edge, this a partition and you just spread it like this you remove your pad um, you put it you peel off this attach it to your panty 
and then you peel off this and attach it to the sides of your panty. Let me demonstrate that. Yeah, so this is my panty. So you peel off this, attach it to your panty. And then you peel off these, this edge. So this, these are the ones that go on the side like this. Yeah, so your, 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 your pad is ready for use. You are ready to wear it and then it traps blood. So after you're done, so after you've peeled and you know you've attached, you do not throw these things away. You don't throw the packaging away or even this packaging after you use this pad, you don't throw it away. You keep it for when you have finished using the pad. You wrap it again. Let me show you from like this one. So after using it, it is soiled, you're changing. So you come and unwrap it, peel it off your panty, and then wrap it. You know, this is where the blood is. You wrap it very well. Wrap it very well. Get some tissue. So you can pack some tissue in your bag as well. If you're in a toilet that doesn't have tissue, you can pack some tissue in your bag. Get some tissue. Wrap the soiled pad. And then after wrapping it, put it back in its package, how it came. So after you've used the pad, this is how it is supposed to look like. So that the person who is going to dispose it, of course, when you use it and throw it in the dustbin in the office, that means there's someone who is going to come and remove those things and take them to the main dustbin or to burn them. You don't want to leave your pad just lying there like this with blood just showing like that. If that blood irritates you or if it nauseates you or if it disgusts you, what do you think about the person who is going to, you know, see your blood like that and is going to carry, look for ways of carrying your, you know, your pad to go and throw it away for you. Yeah, so when you keep it like this, at least this looks good and this looks safe. For, for the person cleaning and also you, you go away confident that your, is, your business is not just that, lying there just like that. Yeah, so this is what you do. So if your pad is like this, you do the same. After that, you wrap it with this thing. You wrap in the... You can actually even this, you can actually wrap it again in the in, in toilet paper. You know, just to keep it safe. To keep it safe, especially for the person that is going to dispose it off after you have used it or after you have left the dustbin. There are three ways how you can dispose of the used pad. I remember when I was sharing about uh, folding panties, how to fold your panties. There's a video on my YouTube channel of how to fold and keep your panties very well and organized. Yeah, so someone asked if I could share about menstrual hygiene actually and specifically how to dispose of uh, used pads. So one of the ways you can dispose of used pads is to throw them in a petri tree. And then another way is to wrap them like this, put them in a cavera. You see, like this vera, this is how you're supposed to throw them away. So as you go through your menstrual uh, cycle, the period you're in your menstruation, those, those four to seven days that you're in your period, you keep throwing them in a cavera like this and tying it. Yeah, until you finish, then you take this cavera and throw it in the pit latrine. If you're near a pit latrine or your bathroom is near a pit latrine, you can just throw there directly. Or you can collect them like this and burn them. You know, get a place somewhere in the neighborhood or in the compound, put a tin, a metallic tin, put your pads and burn them. And then another way for people who can't money, who, who may not be able to burn them or who don't have pit latrines, you can collect them, put them in a cavera like this, tight, tight, and then you throw it in the dustbin together with the other rubbish. You know, at least there it will not be like your things, your pads will not just be there running around in the rubbish in the sweet potatoes and the bread caveras you know they will be safe they'll be secure so that the person who comes and gets them like knows how to dispose them of or where to burn them or you can ask the rubbish uh the people who collect the rubbish where you can put the uh, where you can dispose of 
your used how you can dispose of your your used uh, sanitary towels or where you can throw them and they will let you know yeah so that those are some of the ways that you can throw off or you can dispose them of the used sanitary towels if you have another way of how you dispose of your used sanitary towels please leave it in the comment section below so that we can learn and grow together yeah so another thing to share about that uh, to share about menstrual hygiene is every time you use the toilet make sure that before you leave the toilet you have flushed off any blood or you have wiped off any blood that you know could have meandered on any part of the on any upper part of the toilet or even around the latrine you get some tissue if it's around the latrine get some tissue and you know clean it off and throw the tissue in the latrine if it's in the toilet make sure you flush everything don't leave any you know blood just lying around there it's really uncomfortable for the next person even imagine it is you you've entered the toilet and there's blood all over or there are spots of blood on around the toilet you do not want to use that toilet yeah so you as a person who is going through your menstrual period make sure you carry enough toilet paper if blood spills around the around the seat of the toilet get your tissue very well you know and then just wipe it off wipe it off or even wipes wipe it off the toilet and throw the tissue in the toilet and then flush it make sure that by the time you leave the toilet you have flushed down all the toilet paper that has any blood or need so that the next person coming to use the toilet is comfortable to use it and then this also goes for showering if you're showering also make sure that all the traces of blood as you shower that uh, coming out of you make sure that they've all gone down the drain don't leave blood in the shower or in the bathroom or in the bathtub don't leave blood there make sure you check and make sure that all the blood has been cleaned and it has gone because even you when you come back the next time to shower you want to find a clean shower or a clean bathtub or a clean bathroom you don't want to find it all stained with blood yeah so don't do that to someone else to recap what i was talking about uh as a lady always have like a small bag like this where i put a pad or a panty liner an extra panty and like a light lace so it may not be these heavy ones but just a light one just in case you stamp or something and then also you have to be cognizant or intentional about finding your cycle so that you know when your period start or the days around which your period start so that you are extra careful and extra so that you're extra careful to know or feel when you feel like things are coming down you know out of you you know that maybe my periods have come then you go and put a pad and then also if you're a young girl out there or you know a young girl who has not yet gotten her periods but is in this season of getting her period please share this video with them so that they can know where to start from so an extra precaution for a young girl out there i want to let you know that since your periods have started you are now old you're now a woman you can become pregnant so if you have unprotected sex you are going to become pregnant so i encourage you to stay away from any sexual intercourse as a young girl uh, until you're of age and you can take care of yourself and take care of your baby if you know that you cannot take care of a baby please stay away from sexual intercourse you're now a woman you can now get pregnant yeah so please watch out make sure you don't fall in that trap or in that statistics of early pregnancies teenage pregnancies uh pregnancies outside of wedlock yeah so keep yourself keep pure uh, abstain from sex until you're married and then there you can have sex and then have children so thank you so much for watching and i hope that this topic has encouraged you and motivated you uplifted you to be the best version of yourself if you have a young sister a young daughter out there that has not gotten their period or is going through period shame or is going through anything please let them watch this video and period shame actually is another topic altogether i pray that we can empower our boys and empower our girls to not period shame people who are going through their menstrual periods we can do this ladies we can do this we can empower our boys and tell them about menstrual period and then teach them how to how to treat a girl who has maybe uh, stamped uh, 
who has soiled her dress or her skirt or her trouser teach them how to treat those people because today it is you tomorrow it is someone else's daughter yeah so if you've taught those boys how to treat those women then the those girls then there will be no period shame. Or even the girls, tell them how to treat another girl who has soiled her dress. If she has a sweater, she can give them her sweater so that she can cover herself. Or she can walk behind her if they both have no sweater. She can walk behind her to protect her from anyone or anything that may want to make her feel like she is period shamed. Yeah, that is a topic for another day. Maybe we can talk about it another time. So that is it for this episode uh thank you so much for watching please share this information with everyone who needs it and let's be better together let's be the best versions of ourselves together thank you for watching bye